Welcome back to Grumpy Vet Garage. Today we're going to do our first actual mod on the Supra. Uh, it's very important before any kind of performance mods are done on any car that you actually take care of maintenance or in this case preventative maintenance. Uh, what we're going to be working on today is a catch can. So let me go ahead and show you which catch can I chose. So here's the kit that I decided to get. It's the Forge Motorsport catch can. Um, the reason I purchased this catch can is I thought was the quality of the catch can. There's a lot of solutions for the A90, the, the Mark V Supra, but I, did, I thought this kit was probably the nicer of, of the kits. Uh, I'll show you what it includes. Uh, sticker, of course, got to have a sticker, very important. Didn't come with actual instructions, came with QR code to uh, download the instructions, trying to save paper. Joke's on them, I'm going to print them out. Just kidding, I'm not going to do that, but um, they're trying to save paper, which is smart. Why, why package extra? Uh, comes with the catch can. It says forward right on top. Very nice piece. Uh, of course, drain on the bottom. It looks like a dipstick on the top. Down the turbo, there's actually a Y fitting that uh, they include. I've already kind of briefly looked over the instructions. You have to move O-rings over on certain fittings to uh, to accomplish this install, which does not look too uh, too intimidating, really. And then it came with two hoses, so it's not reusing um, one of the hoses that goes to the turbo. And they're very nice replacement OE style fittings. I'm just gonna get that in the light. And then like a heat shrink that was placed over the connection there with uh, a nylon braided hose. So the two hoses, pretty pretty simple kit, but again. Uh, I'm really uh, pleased with the quality of the Forge Motorsport kit and i um, looking forward to putting it on. To install the can, first thing uh, under the hood is uh, pull the engine cover and then next, uh, per the instructions, it's going to want us to pull the air box. So to pull the air box, of course, we're going to have to remove uh, this strut bar uh, and then disconnect this clamp and this sensor and then we'll be able to lift this out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those items and pull that out, and then I'll come back. So I went ahead and removed the, uh, the strut bar here. Ended up being a, a E14 Torx. And also had to disconnect uh, this. Per the instructions, it said it was a 7 millimeter for that clamp. It ended up being 6. So, it you know, depending on the year, whether or not you have a 2020 or later, maybe it's different. Um this being a 2021 but the the air box itself just lifts right out and I mean leaves a large area to work in so next we're gonna move on to I believe remove this line and you can see how it goes down let me get my light so you can see how it goes down here but it also connects to another line. That's where I believe the Y is going to come in that's supplied by uh, Forge Motorsports. So I completed disconnection of that line on top of the engine. The fitting there going, let me point at it. This fitting right here going to the turbo mouth. Additionally, had to disconnect this small line right there. I'm trying not to shine too much light, but give you good light. That right there. And with that disconnected, this line comes free. Um, there is a small clip right here that holds wiring. So that also has to be disconnected. Not difficult to do. So per the instructions, there's uh, two items that got to get moved over from the original hose. One being the metal clip needs to be removed. And then it's hard to see inside, but there's an O-ring below that white piece. It's clearly marked in the instructions. So I, um, I, you'd be able to tell pretty easily, but it's an O-ring. You got to be real careful not to damage it, pulling it out of the original line. Um, but yeah, you have to move it over to the new one and you'll be good to go. 
might be difficult to see, but the, uh, the fitting is now on the turbo inlet and the small pipe. You want to make sure to, to press this down until it clicks for that retaining piece to hold this Y onto the turbo mouth. I hope that improved the lighting to kind of see how this is connected. So they have one that's like a 45 degree angle and they have another one that is a 90 degree angle. Um, the 45, of course, well, per the instructions, goes down here and then a 90 goes up here. It has it oriented this way. I'm assuming that the line's going to come back like this together. So utilizing the existing T25 screw that comes on the strut tower, um, you mount the catch can and very, very strongly mounted with just a screw. Um, the design is, is really good and fits well in that area. Before I go too much further, I uh, found a problem. So this does fit nice and tight, but when you test fit the air box back into the car, the heat shield on the back of the air box will contact, at least on mine it does, and you should check it on yours, um, contacts the catch can. Uh, of course, I don't want it to destroy the finish of uh, the catch can. And uh, my plan is eventually to change the air intake on the car, but it wasn't high on my priority list. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to trim the, uh, the heat shield. Uh, if I don't like how that looks, I may actually remove the heat shield, but I'm thinking about trimming it, just taking that edge off the back and test fitting it that way. Okay, so I sorted it out. Um, I thought about it. I really did want to keep the heat shield temporarily. It was there for a reason from the factory to keep the exhaust heat off the box and off this other resonator that I know you can delete. Um, but my intention wasn't to spend the $40 to delete that resonator when the intention in the long run is just to get rid of this intake in general. Um, but it's really up to you. But what I ended up doing was just cutting back here and um, used a cutoff wheel. Um, and then I came back with a flap disc, but you could easily just come back with sandpaper just to smooth it off. What you don't want to have is sharp burrs on the edge of it that's going to catch you later when you're doing something else. But you definitely didn't want to leave it as is um, if it was touching. If yours is different uh, when you put it in, then you may not have to do this. This is definitely not in the instructions but it was required to uh, to get this done. I, forget, so. I removed the heat shield from the box when I did the cutting just because I didn't want to have any kind of loose debris in here. There's already a little bit of dust that's in there, but not metal shaving. So remove it from the box is my suggestion to do that. So this up here is a T25, but the screws that hold along the side, those are T20s. Um, intakes back on. Um, if you still have the resonator, you're going to have to put the box back in, then put the catch can back. But it's not that big a deal, removing the box, removing that, it's, it's, it's all pretty, pretty easy. Of course, make sure when you're done that, you know, you're putting this down, make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, I didn't get a particular torque spec, but it just needs to be snug. Um, you definitely don't want to smoke this down, you just want it to be snug in there. Also remember to put back your mass air. Uh, but now that it's installed, uh, it's going to, in theory, catch oil vapor. So what you're going to want to do is utilize the dipstick function of this catch of this catch can, and it'll let you know whether or not it's full of oil or not. Um, but I would check it at least every oil change, just to make sure, um, and that'll probably give you a good gauge on whether or not you need to check it more often than that. But um, it's a little a little peace of mind that you're not going to be dragging trash from inside the crankcase back through your intake track because of course if you get oil in that and it gets sucked into the turbo the turbo is going to pressurize it it's going to come across it's going to make your entire intake track dirty intercooler is built into the intake manifold here so you don't want to get oil and garbage going back in there and also this is a direct injected engine Direct injection, direct injected engines are notorious for having carbon buildup on the valves anyways. You don't want to have additional oil vapor getting into your intake track, making that even worse. Um, which brings up another thing that I was hoping maybe the community would be able to help me out. If somebody 
has any experience um, on the A90 Supra, does water meth do a good job of, for one thing, making power, but also cleaning the intake valves? Um, I'm, I'm interested. It, it seems like it would do that, but the whole point is to try to keep this intake track clean, but also down the road, I'm thinking that a water meth system might be something that could keep that system cleaner. So if anybody has any experience with that and could enlighten me on ways that we can prevent the carbon buildup on a direct injected engine, I would appreciate that. Please leave a comment. Also, if you like this video and like my channel, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, it, it would it would do me... <laughs> It would it would help the channel a lot if if you were if you were to uh, subscribe and then like this video, um, but uh, thanks for watching uh, my first mod really to my car.